she once was the pride of America The best of the ships on the sea She was built fast and strong About a thousand feet long And was powered by engines of steam Designed by the best of our architects Aluminum welded to steel With a crew of 900 The beam was abundant To hold 12 decks above the keel I'm Susan Gibbs with the SS United States Conservancy and here with David McCauley and we are thrilled to be celebrating the release of Crossing on Time here at the SS United States, prominently featured in this extraordinary book. And what could be a more appropriate place for, um, for this kind of introduction than in front of the ship itself? I mean, uh, Trying to squeeze that ship into this little book was not an easy task, but I'm happy to say it's behind me now. And this is going to be a really special, special tour uh, because David is going to lead it and, and kind of guide us through some of the nooks and crannies and things have changed just a little bit since he was a child, uh, crossing the Atlantic as a, how old were you again? 10. 10, a 10 year old. Uh, and so, so this is uh, this will be fun. We'll, we'll really kind of poke into some places that I don't think I've even seen, and I've been on the ship a few times. <laughs> so, so we're we're really excited. Mike, who you've already met, is going to accompany David in, in kind of leading our group on the tour. Mike is leading David. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this right. Mike, don't lose sight of him. You can lose sight of me. That's fine. <laughs> Do not lose sight of this guy once we get up there because. After a while, it all kind of looks the same on these decks where the floors, where the walls are gone. It's just like an amazing amount of space. And then there are these moments that I, I you know, hope we all get to see. Some of which I, I put on my list of wishes, my wish list, uh, are things I still haven't seen. Spider, like the swimming pool, for instance. Are we getting to the swimming pool? It's lit up. So. It's lit up. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> see this? Did everyone bring their suits? It's not. Yeah, it's who you know, really. Uh, Remember, I'm a 10-year-old kid on this ship, and all I want to do is get there, basically. What I had not realized at the time, and what I didn't realize until I really started thinking about the book, was what an extraordinary machine I was on and had been on. But I missed it. I spent most of my time in the movie theater, because it was free, and, and I could see the same movie three times a day. It doesn't get better than that. Um, and uh, I'm being on deck, just watching Endless Horizon forever, which as a 10 year old was really not the most exciting thing in my life. I was waiting for the Empire State Building to come into view and, um, and everything was about that focus. You also notice that the, um, the name of the deck is often written and even the frame number, um, but the frame number, not necessarily, you have to know what deck you're on if you're building a ship. But apparently when they were working on the ship, you wouldn't necessarily know where in the, in the length about a stern if you were. So you'll see on pillars and posts and sometimes on the floor, I think, um, the frame I think you're better off it. So And there are, what, 300 and something, 315, 325 always, frames. And that's about better stern. than I do. Um, so they, knew, they, too, they too needed, you know, sort of help in orienting themselves, they being the builders, painters, outfitters, etc., etc. Et anyway, let's get on the ship.
in flags, multiple flags. Um, and the shafts, or the engines, run on either side of the wall. So you're actually you're standing here, you're basically standing on one of the shaft alleys. Um, the inner shafts. Yeah. yeah. The outer shafts have probably already left the building at this point. Uh, yes, they did. Have they? Yeah. Back there, they're already the front. But uh, not, uh, not a steerage class. control the speed and reduce the speed of the propeller shaft which heads in that direction from this uh, reduction gear assembly. So all of these were covered with asbestos of course because they, they would have been incredibly hot. Um, the steam being pumped into the, this is the larger turbine, the low pressure turbine. On the other side of it is the high pressure turbine. Between these two would be connected and combined in the gear assembly uh, thing over here. So that's, I mean, that's how, basically how it works. We're sort of on the center line of the ship, right about on this, on this column. All the control panels are there. Uh, more control panels and electrical stuff above. I've spent a lot of time trying to follow the pipes in photographs so that when I made the drawing of the engine room, I kind of knew where the, where the pipes were going and where they were coming from. They're coming from the boiler room, which is that away. So, <laughs> This big round thing here is a steam drum. This is where the high pressure, highest pressure steam is collected and it goes out through these pipes to the, um, to the engine room, to the turbines. Yes. Lots of portholes. There's a lot of like manhole covered things on one side of the, of, the, of the boiler so you can really see how you could get into each section of it basically and clean out the, bo the burners themselves, make sure they're still dispensing the uh, aerated oil and to chill the steam and reduce it to warm water, which would then go back into the pumps and into the cleaning system before being sent back to the boilers, before being converted into um, you know, super high pressure steam um, and so on. That's, what, that's what's there and on the other side too. You always see these sort of matching sets. And this thing is below, this one and that one are below the big turbine, the big low pressure turbine that we saw upstairs in the other engine room. So that steam is now finished, comes down, is drawn down, there's a vacuum created through this system and then back towards the boiler room. So that's, that's what you're seeing on either side. Fan rooms are also pumping cool air in. The, the air is being sucked up through the center of the, of the stacks and the clean air is being sort of pulled down the side and into that room up there. So it would have been pretty toasty to answer your question. That's not an official Navy term, <laughs> but it's the term I would use, toasty. Okay. You would not want to be but those, are, those panels, were, they were pre-assembled pieces with all the holes. And the holes are cut, obviously, just to lighten the metal, the material. But you'll see them all the way down. And if you look at photographs of the construction, you just see those panels set up and you can see how the ship is growing and how it's being built. All these pre-assembled parts, which is why you could build a ship in a year and a half. This is my movie theater. Home <laughs> away from home. But, you know, pretty, pretty slick.
Richard Dorchak, uh, Call of New Jersey, uh, here on the SS United States. Uh, my connection with this uh, beautiful ship is uh, my grandmother and grandfather used to cross uh, the Atlantic on their way to Europe every season. It's just wonderful to be aboard and uh, see this beautiful ship and let's hope it gets back into, back into some use someday. My name is Chris Stock. I am from Massachusetts and uh, yeah, very excited to have gotten this tour. It was really fun to meet David McCauley and to get a tour of the United States. Just generally um, pretty amazing that they had, you know, this entire um, infrastructure for, for ferrying people across the Atlantic uh, and would love to see something happen with it. My name's Pam Wojnar and I, my dad was in the Coast Guard. I love the SS United States because I sailed on her when I was six years old, when my dad got transferred from Connecticut to London, England. So it just brings back a lot of great memories and I'm hoping that she will be saved and other people will be able to make memories on her. I'm Laura Embry from Columbia, Maryland and I brought my brother and my son with me. Uh, we, My brother and I were on the ship in 1968 going over to Europe. So this is a dream come true to all be able to tour the ship together. Hi, I'm AJ Jelonic and I'm from Leesburg, Virginia and I think the SS United States should be a saved ocean liner. Um, we really don't make anything like this anymore. It had beautiful interiors and it's a technological marvel. Um, and it would be really great to see that as a mixed-use, redeveloped venue again. Its scale keeps changing depending on obviously where you are, but... Someone I know said that um, when you're like in the parking lot it looks small, but yeah. it's really freaking huge. <laughs> <laughs> freaking huge is a good way of putting it. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. And this ship is literally just a frame already built waiting for renovation and stuff. Oh, it's just, it's ready to go. Yeah. This ship is more than ready to go. Um, just requires that enormous amount of energy, and resources, and so on and so forth to pull it back together and give it a new life. I mean, not just restore it, but for a reason. And, um, but you know, it's come up. Yeah. Time to time, like, can you make this accessible? Yeah. Can you, can you get the yeah. thing? I just never have that time. Yeah. Yeah. I think you recognize that. Yeah. yeah. You've yeah. yeah. the starboard yeah. side. The thing our dad was most excited about uh, us doing this was yes. that we get to meet you. Yes. Yeah. Well, he was uh, all over. No, the ship's not bad. <laughs> the ship's not bad. <laughs> Very inefficient process. <laughs> but anyway, the book is done. Honestly, or I was so in the movie. What theater. was that moment for you? When did that happen? That spark well, I, I mean, I'm learning more about ships in general. And ships in general. When I started, uh, I did a, a book called Ship in 1992, which was about the ar underwater archaeology and the discovery of the Caravel, okay. like the Nina, the Pinta. Mm -hmm. um, that was probably the beginning. So I was thinking about ships, and then it wasn't until 2013 or so when I began to think about this one. We're looking at the uh, the funnels, the two funnels of the United States. These are kind of emblematic of the ship. And um, a couple of things to notice about them. First of all, the fins on top, the cap, and then the fins on, on, on the at the rear of the uh, funnels. Those fins were really a part of all Gibbs' ships. Um, they, were became, they became a sort of trademark. But in this ship in particular, they were adjusted to make sure that even more of the soot and exhaust that poured out of the top of the funnels when they were really churning away um, would be deflected away from the deck so the people playing shovelboard and trying to drink their champagne would not be interrupted by stuff falling on them or in their beverage. Um, the other thing to keep in mind about these things, you can see the remaining three colors, the blue on top and then the white and then the red. Um, and the last thing I would mention is that they were so big they had to be installed in two pieces. So the top piece, the top half of the shaft of the funnel and the cap was, um, was put on last. So imagine that still sitting on the, on the deck, the forward deck. Um, the lower section of the funnel was lifted first, dropped in place, and then once it was set, they'd bring the top part from the front deck where it had been temporarily stored and raise it up and put it on and uh, rivet it in place and so on. That's all aluminum, aluminum panels, basically. Um, and they're, the shaping of the, of the top, the cap, uh, is very precise, but it, was also, it had to be hand done um, to, over molds like uh, you know, pieces of the Statue of Liberty. So um, 
A lot went into that, but I'm glad it did because they are a beautiful kind of reminder of the ship beneath them. When the financing promise fell through And she went up for auction Despite all the talks and objections of more than a few Now it's all so Here we go, everybody right here, rest me she was heard Despite all of the others And now the procession is asking the question Can this great lady be saved? Yes, that's United States Conservancy We're trying